Hello, I'm Christopher Owens with Coldwell Banker College Real Estate. The reason I'm putting this short video together is to encourage homeowners and home buyers that small home improvements are affordable, effective, and not nearly as daunting as you may think they are. Today, we will demonstrate the basics of painting a bedroom wall, what it takes, and how much it costs to prepare for this job. I went to the local Hayes Hardware store to cost out the items needed. It ran about $65. You need a good quality gallon of paint, a good paintbrush, I prefer a 2 inch Wooster, this is the Pro Series with the angled edge, a 3 inch, a 3 8 inch nap roller pad, a 9 inch roller cage, a paint tray, disposable paint tray liner, very handy, and a gallon jug. Cut in half like this makes a great paint pail for trimming. What you don't need is painter's tape. You may ask why. After all the effort of applying the tape around the trim and the ceiling joint, you will notice that splotches of paint will still creep under the tape and show up on the surface you were hoping to keep clear. It is not worth your time. Instead, a bit of patience and a steady hand and you can easily cut in those spots before you roll the large areas of the wall. Let me show you a few tricks of the trade I learned from professional painters back when I was a general contractor working on homes for a living. We will talk about the amount of paint to put on the brush, the application of the paint onto the wall, and the corner lines and the trim. Let's get started. It doesn't take much, just enough to keep the paintbrush wet. Something that I do also is I poke holes in the top of my rim so that the paint has a place to go and it doesn't just dry up there in, big, in a big glob. How much paint do you need on the brush to cut in a corner or trim? Enough to make it good and wet and then rub off the edges. But you still need what's inside the brush to apply onto the wall nice and thick. All right, I'm going to start where I made a patch on this wall and put the primer on already so you can see how I cut in the paint from the colored wall to the white ceiling. And it also doesn't hurt to have a nice wet rag around handy just in case you, you get a little bit too far you can always clean it off real fast. With enough paint on your brush, you start underneath the, the ceiling joint about a half an inch, pressing your brush up forward, and then slowly bringing the brush with the, the paint to the corner joint, letting it glide on smoothly. Once you run out of paint and your brush starts getting dry, and come back with what you have, and paint down far enough that when you roll, you have enough room that the roller can match this paint but not hit your ceiling. We'll do a little bit more here. Come back here and hit this area. Paint your walls first, especially if your walls and ceilings are different color. Because if you do get a little on the ceiling and you plan on painting your ceiling as well, it's easier then to clean up a little bit of blotch here and there with the ceiling than it is with the wall paint. Because normally, wall paint is much darker than ceiling paint. So it's easier to go back with the white later. Okay, again, come back over. Now, I will tell you one more thing, and I hate to disappoint you, but you're more than likely going to have to go over this twice with your paint. I know it says one coat, but more than likely when you're done, you'll see areas that the old paint will bleed through. So what I do is I will trim in a whole room, cut it in, and then I'll come back and do it again. Then when I roll, which I can do almost immediately because paint dries so quickly, latex does, that I can roll twice very quickly and the room is done. To give you a better shot on how this works, I have enough paint in my brush. I keep the brush away from the trim, out a little bit, then push the brush toward it, pushing the bristles toward the trim, and then slowly moving it 
and gliding it down the line between the wall and the trim. You don't need to fill your pan up all the way. You need to have enough in it so you have room to work. But if you fill it all the way, then you don't have time or room to be able to put the right amount of paint on your roller. Then you put too much paint on it and it becomes big glooping um, lines on the, roll, on the wall. And that's not what you want. Here's how much paint you want on the roller. You want to just roll the paint into it. You don't want to dunk it because then you put so much paint, you saturate the roller so much and it's all over everything that it's hard to keep the walls clean and free of, of big paint lines. You don't want to starve your roller and then have bare spots on the wall, but neither do you want to have it where it's big and gloopy. That'll be a good start. Okay, now we're going to roll the large field of the wall. Now, I don't have this wall and the ceiling trimmed out yet, but that's okay. I'll come back later and take care of that. The idea at this point is to show you how to roll the wall. There are probably a hundred different videos out there telling you how to paint a room. It's not that hard, and I'm not going to probably add any more than you've already learned. You could put it on an M's and S's and ups and downs and sideways. It really doesn't matter how you put your paint on. Just put your paint on. I'll do the top section, come down, do the bottom section, and you can see that's thick. When I first put it on, it's very thick, but as I roll, that wall is sucking the paint up very fast. And I'm going back over it because I'm grabbing the really thick areas. Okay, then, now that I've done the top and bottom, I will go all the way up and all the way down. Keep in mind, normally I have my trim and my ceiling cut in and ready to go, but for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to put paint on this wall and trim that in later. There you go. That way when it dries and you look at this wall, you won't have places where it shows the roller stopped here and started there. It's all one smooth application. It's as simple as that. I know you can do this. I know you have it in it. You'll enjoy it. There'll be gratification for you. Once you do paint your own walls, you'll save a lot of money. You might make more money for the house that you sell or the buyers. You might be able to get a house cheaper knowing that you'll paint it and save yourself all that aggravation. Thank you for your time.